Blanco, Reposado, and Añejo. You've probably heard these terms when it comes to describing a tequila, but what do they mean and what's the difference between them? So all three of those terms relate to the aging of a tequila. And before we get into what they each mean, first let's talk about why any spirit is aged at all. Aging is a process of taking a spirit after it gets distilled and putting it in a wooden barrel for a length of time and the spirit will start to take on some of the characteristics from the barrel and the wood inside of it. With a lot of spirits, the unrefined or unaged version of it is a little bit harsh. If you think about whiskey, you don't really see unaged whiskey. I mean, there's a reason for that. Uh, usually it's a very harsh thing to drink. And so originally aging was used to kind of smoothen out the more harsh flavors of a raw spirit. Now that isn't the, necessarily the case with tequila because as we'll get to in a little bit, unaged tequila is incredibly popular. Now that we've talked about why spirits are aged in general, let's jump into these three terms. So first we have Blanco tequila. Blanco just means white in Spanish. It is a term and definition of tequila. That means that the tequila was unaged, meaning that it came off of the still. It might've been rested in say a stainless steel tank for a little bit and that it wasn't really aged in any wood. And so you end up with this very clear or Blanco looking liquid. All right, let's pour some of this out. And so as you can see, it is a very clear or Blanco spirit. So there's no color to it. So a Blanco tequila is usually the most raw and true and honest expression of what the master distiller wanted to get out of his tequila. And so let's give it a little taste. And so with Blanco tequilas, you get that, a lot of that raw agave flavor right up front, but you still get some really beautiful, maybe grassy or vegetal notes from the tequila. After all, tequila is made from the agave plant and the agave plant usually spends anywhere between six to eight years in the ground before it gets harvested and then cooked and fermented and then distilled and turned into tequila. So it comes in contact with a lot of different things in the ground and it has a very unique flavor. And so the Blanco tequila gives you all of that, like a punch to the face all at once. And so what is the actual definition of a Blanco? And so I did say earlier that a Blanco is unaged, but technically the definition means that a tequila, that for it to be called a Blanco, it needs to spend anywhere between zero and two months in a barrel. So yes, technically there are some Blanco tequilas that are aged. For example, we have Montagave Blanco tequila. It is still technically a Blanco, but if you can see that, it's not clear. It is, it is not Blanco necessarily in terms of the color, but by definition it is. It's got almost like a pinkish orangey color, and that's because it was rested in Bordeaux barrels from France, but because it falls within those two months, it still is technically a Blanco tequila. So just a fun little uh, twist on a traditional Blanco tequila. But you do get a lot of those raw agave flavor notes, but it is a little bit more mellowed out because of those, of those Bordeaux barrels used. And so you get this almost funky little wine reminiscent flavor from it, which I find absolutely incredible. And I think it's a fun little way of playing with the definitions of tequila. And so the next one we're gonna talk about is reposado tequilas. And reposado is a term that just means rested in Spanish. For a tequila to be considered a reposado, it needs to be aged in a barrel from anywhere between two months and a year. And so as you can see, this is a little bit darker than the Blanco tequilas I was showing you earlier. And then let's pour some of this out. And you could almost be forgiven if you didn't see the color in the glass and more so in the bottle for at least this expression of a reposado. Some reposados are a little bit darker, but this one is quite light. And so just by the color and also by the taste, you can tell that it didn't really spend all that much time in a barrel, but I love Reposado tequilas for a very specific reason. I think that Reposados give you the absolute best of both worlds. You get the raw, amazing, honest flavor of a Blanco tequila mixed with some of the best elements of a aged spirit from say like the Añejo tequilas, because you get a lot of the notes from the barrel. So you get some of that butterscotchiness, a little bit of the, the wood, and it kind of smoothens it out just a little bit. And so Reposado tequilas give you the best of both worlds. Um, I think it's a wholly unique aging process in spirits across the world, because a lot of spirits are just much darker. Uh, and I think that Reposados are very, very unique in that sense. You can make some amazing cocktails with Reposado tequilas. Uh, and I actually did a whole video uh, just the other week on it uh, that you can find on my channel. And lastly, we have Añejo tequilas. For a tequila to be considered Añejo, it needs to have spent anywhere between one and three years in a barrel. As you can tell, the color is much, much darker in the bottle. And then we will pour some out and compare it as well. 
So this one you can even see in the glass that it's much darker color. It's more of a golden, ambery color. And then we'll give it a little taste. Oh, that's so good. Añejo tequilas, uh, by virtue of them spending the most time in a barrel in these three, it, it will be, uh, out of these three, the closest to, say, a whiskey. It'll get a whole bunch of those uh, barrel notes. So you get a, lot, a good amount of that butterscotch, you know, some of that caramel, and some of that rounding out from the barrel. But what I love about a really well-made Añejo is that it doesn't mask the flavor of the original spirit. So you still undoubtedly understand that it's a tequila. It'd be like if you took a really well-made Blanco tequila and an amazing whiskey and they had a baby. And I think that's what you'd get with Añejo tequilas. I, I know, kind of weird, but at least that's my way of explaining it, I guess. What I love about Añejo tequilas and say a cocktail is that it can be excellent. You can kind of make variations of say whiskey cocktails using uh, an Añejo tequila. And because there's so, there's so many whiskey cocktails out there because of how much uh, throughout history, people have used whiskey. I think that swapping in an Añejo tequila for one of those recipes will create an amazing, unique recipe as well. And of course, I can already hear the comment section saying, but what about extra Añejos? Well, yes, I don't actually have a bottle of extra Añejos to show you, and that's mostly from a personal choice. I don't really like extra Añejos. I find that a lot, a lot of the extra Añejos that I've ever tasted, they really start to mask the flavor of the original spirit. And I like drinking tequila because I want to drink something that tastes like tequila but we'll go through it anyway. Extra Añejo is a term that was created in about 2006 because of the high demand for tequila in Europe and in the US. And uh, a lot of people wanted to age tequila more like aging whiskey. And so an Extra Añejo is any tequila that has spent anywhere between three and five years in a barrel. These will be way more akin to a whiskey than say an Añejo tequila. It'll have a lot more of those barrel notes and it'll taste way more like that barrel than an Añejo tequila will. My personal opinion is that I, I would rather drink an Añejo than an extra Añejo any day. But if you're, say, a scotch or whiskey drinker and you want to get into tequilas, it might not be a bad way to get into tequila. Though I do find them to be a little bit overpriced for what they are. But that's just my personal opinion. But if you want to know what I think are the best tequila brands out there right now, you can check out this video right here next.